copies quickly. I type the word prop and hit tab tab to expand it. The property is already set to an integer type, so I can just hit tab to name it. We'll add another property, this time holding a list of strings to handle the genres. Save our changes. In order to make use of the store index view model from our store controller, we need to add a using statement to reference the namespace. Now I'll change the store controller's index method to return that view model. We'll use object initializer syntax to quickly create the objects and set their properties with one line of code. First, we'll create a list of strings to hold the genres. Now we can create our view model. Again, we'll use object initializers to create and populate this object in the same line of code. Open the brace. Now we can hit control space to bring up IntelliSense. We'll first populate the number of genres, setting it equal to the count of genres in our collection. We'll hit comma and populate now the list of genres, and we'll set that from the previous genre variable that we just created. We'll close this off. And finally, we'll change our return statement to return the view. This is reminding us to change our return type for this controller action to return an action result. One thing you may have noticed is that we're using the var keyword to declare our variables. If you're new to C Sharp or .NET, you may assume that this is doing late binding, meaning that we're just saying create a variable and we're not set specifying a type. And that's not correct. The C Sharp compiler is actually using type inference. So it's saying, okay, you've created a list of strings. That means genre is a list of strings and it's strongly typing it to that. So this gives us the benefit of strongly typing, but cuts down on some unnecessarily repetitive code to create a list of strings and then say, this is a list of strings. Now we're ready to add a view. Before we do that, however, we'll need to build the project so that the add view dialog knows about our store index view model. We can do that by selecting debug build MVC music store. Now we're ready to add that view. Right click on the store index controller action and select add view. Again, it's pre-populated it with the correct name. This time, however, we're going to want to create a strongly typed view. So I check that checkbox and I select the only view model we've created so far. We'll leave everything else as is and click the add button. First, let's update the name of the page. Now we're ready to display some of that information we've provided. We'll use less than percent colon to write out content. This is called a code block. It's often commonly referred to as a code nugget. We're going to use this to execute or write out content within our view template. There are two main ways you'll see this used. Code within just a less than percent is executed code within less than percent colon is executed and the results are then output to the page. Now in previous versions of ASP.NET, you may have used percent equals to output values. However, that is not correct anymore because that does not HTML encode the values that are in there. We've already talked about HTML encoding and the importance of that in the section on controllers. Instead, you should use percent colon to output values, and this will ensure that the values are HTML encoded. So with that all out of the way, we're ready to start outputting some values. We'll use a paragraph tag to hold this information. We'll tell the user how many genres they can select from. 
We'll use less than percent colon to begin inserting a value. Then we'll type model. We strongly type this template to a store index view model. So when I press the dot key, I bring up IntelliSense. And this shows the properties that are available for that model. I'll press enter to select number of genres. And I'll finish the lineup. Now we'll use a for each loop inside of an unordered list to write out those genre names. Again, I'll use a Visual Studio snippet to write out my for each loop. And I'll be iterating through my model.genres collection. I've formatted my for each loop a little bit. And now, since we've escaped out of it, we're back to writing HTML. And we'll insert the genre name. Now, we do have a little bit of logic here in using a for each loop. However, it's just a for each loop. We really don't want to have any program flow or business logic in our view. We want to keep all that logic inside a controller. Now let's run our site again and see how this looks. We'll click on the store link in our header, and there's our list. So it filled in this list of strings and the number. That's it for this video. In the next video, we'll continue implementing view models. We'll make them dynamic and we'll begin using HTML helpers within MVC to create links between our pages.